I started out hating my husband and my feet hurt. It all was worth it in the end. The pain we all seek right here. Show the buck, Eric. Am I gonna get sponsored now? <laughs> you missed a couple times. Like four. <laughs> I did it all in one Rimrock Stalker. Nice job, buddy. Thanks. Well, you're probably wondering. Who's this guy that isn't Aaron and is much better looking than Eric on the Mealy Break YouTube channel? And the answer is, I am their video editor, Jordan Sparks. I've been working for these guys since about February. Uh, just They brought me on, had me do some video editing. They liked what I did. Um, so if you see anything past Axis Steer, that's stuff that I've worked on. Thanks for not making fun of me for too much of my mistakes. I, <laughs> I make a lot of them uh, in the edits, but you guys have been awesome to keep watching, uh, keep supporting the channel. Um, thanks for supporting me through learning how to video edit. <laughs> it's been an awesome time. So yeah, so Aaron and Eric have asked me to go out and film a hunt with our friends over at Hunts for the Brave. Uh, it's a really cool organization. It uh, gets veterans out, uh, gets them hunting, so it's really fun. And they've also been geared up by our friends over at Cryptech, so should be a good time. Alrighty, so I'm here with John. Um, John's the head of, uh, or on the board I'm on of- board directors of uh, Hunts for the Brave. Our organization uh, takes combat veterans, uh, first responders, uh, and youth with uh, challenging maybe diseases and uh, life-threatening stuff. Out on outdoor experiences, uh, primarily hunting, but we do have some fishing and other outdoor adventures that uh, they go on to. This is to uh, reward them for their service and sacrifice, but uh, we've discovered over the years that this also has a tremendous therapeutic benefit uh, for our uh, servicemen and uh, and uh, with 22 a day committing suicide, uh, you can't do enough for our veterans, so. <clears throat> so my name is Mark Cooper. I spent about 12 and a half years on active duty in the Army. I'm currently a, a, a major in the Army National Guard doing um, one week in a month. It's kind of standard traditional duty. Um, was turned on to Hunts for the Brave through Casey. So Casey and I go back about 10 years and uh, have been, you know, reading up on Hunts for the Brave and uh, found out what a, a tremendous organization it is and just feel super pri privileged to be out here on this hunt. Casey Smith, I retired as a non-commissioned officer in the United States Army. Spent just under 10 years uh, following an injury to my back. Uh, was a retired early. Like Mark mentioned, uh, him and I go back about 10 years. He was actually my commanding officer when I was a young private. Uh, so when this opportunity came up to come up here and hunt this weekend, uh, Mark was uh, high on the list to come out. So. Super excited to be out here, spend the week with him hunting, look for some mule deer, and have some good camaraderie. Awesome. Right. Cool, guys. Well, we're going to have a great week. This is going to be sweet. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Today was awesome. We were welcomed here at the ranch with uh, some bi uh, brisket and beans. Nice warm meal right when we showed up. Fantastic food. Man. Yeah, it was great food. Uh, everybody was very welcoming. Yeah, so Hunts for the Brave, I got started with them a few years ago. Um, a guy, Steve Sorensen, took me out on a, a veteran hunt for a mountain lion. And not one to be a, a receiver of charity, I had to figure out a way to give back to the organization. So I did uh, a big fundraiser and we raised about $15,000 and gave it back to Hunts for the Brave. Um, ever since then, it's just been a family for me. Now I've evolved on to being one of the board of directors um, and volunteer as much time as I can. Just being able to get out on hunts like this with uh, fellow veterans like Mark, it's an incredible organization. We just, you know, when we get out of the military, sometimes there's a puzzle piece missing in our life and it's that brotherhood, that camaraderie from when you were in the service, you could lean on somebody. So an organization like this, it allows you to just decompress, unplug from the world, and spend some time with a fellow vet, you know, out hunting Quality or time fishing. Quality outdoors, yeah. Absolutely. Quality times and therapeutic, uh, aspects are unreal yeah. so hunts for the brave has been a great avenue for that 22 veterans commit suicide every single day so that's that's 22 brothers 
sisters, mothers, fathers, husbands, husbands, yeah, wives, wives, 22. And I think a lot of that stems from the fact that when they get out of the military, like I mentioned, they don't have that brotherhood, that 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 camaraderie or that connection that they can rely on when times get hard. So a lot of times too, the military yeah. becomes your identity, right? And mm -hmm. so there, there is that piece, like Casey's referring to, there's that piece missing whenever you exit the service and uh, trying to find, you know, trying to find something to fill that gap is super important. Yeah, absolutely. So like me personally, the military was going to be my lifelong career. I was looking in the long run. I wanted to do 20 plus years. Well, I injured my back and that got cut short. So I retired at nine and a half years. I didn't know what else I was gonna do, so the military was a huge part of my life at that point. And so, like he says, I mean, that was my identity. And so it just completely threw off my whole life plan. So finding a, an organization that uh, you can kind of still connect with that aspect of your life is super important. Look forward to great things tomorrow. Yeah, it's absolutely. Gonna be, it's going to be a beautiful day. It's his 40th birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. So we're going to go get a 40-inch wide buck. There you go. <laughs> got to be out there somewhere. It's somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's morning of day two. Boys are up and ready. Cool yeah. man's birthday, 40 years old today. 40 years old today. He's going to find himself a nice 170. It's going to be pretty sweet. We're going out with Mark this morning. Yeah. Um, we're just in the Ranger. going to go look for some uh, some nice bucks. See what we can find. Casey is out with Jim, and uh, he's looking for doing some window shopping. We're gonna do a little window shopping as well, so we'll see what we can find. Two by three? Is it a two by three? I think so. Can you see another fork back there? Yeah, it's behind leaves. Oh, okay. You can I see. see that fork, but it goes up. Okay, yeah, I see. Ways. This is a completely different buck than we've seen. Yeah. Another great evening on the ranch. Um, saw some recycled bucks from this morning. Saw some more, some different bucks that have moved in on the property, which is really cool. Some pretty unique deer. Um, right at last light, maybe 10 minutes before last light, we came across a, a pretty decent buck that we sat there in glass for a while, but it was just too dark to really make him out. But uh, you know, maybe 24, just, just, just on the, just right at that ear level, maybe a 24 inch deer. Um, but yeah, really cool buck. So excited about tomorrow. Um, it's gonna be another good day. What's up, dude? Hey. Get anything? No, but it got exciting quick. Yeah? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, we found a nice buck. Nice, good. Yeah, he's about 27 wide. Oh good. Yeah. yeah so game plan for tomorrow. It by five five o'clock in the afternoon, it was already dark in that canyon because it's you know yeah, so deep. Shaded, yeah. And so we're sitting at the bottom and we're glassing back towards the west. And there's four does over here, four more does over here, two over here, and then I just happen to look up like all the way to the top. I see two does and then I just see this big buck running down. He's got his head down, you know, sniffing mm -hmm. her butt, pushing her all over. He gets in the spotter. He's like, we gotta go now. <laughs> <laughs> he turns into Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> <laughs> well, Casey, this is probably a bad time now because we, we were gonna make a little bet. If we get the bigger buck, then you have to shave. Not happening. No. <laughs> no. If, if you get the bigger buck, then I have to shave. You got like a week's worth of growth there. Oh, it's like a two weeks. <laughs> two weeks worth of growth. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got one in your. You got one that's looking I'll, pretty I'll, sweet though. I'll trim that one hair right there. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't shaving until it's like belly button. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You, yeah. You've got a head start on us at least. I don't know. He's, he's thinking about he's it. Thinking yeah. about it. He's thinking about it. I think that's the cool thing about the rut, though, is it, it's still anybody's ball game all, all the time. New bucks are moving in and out. Oh yeah. Just never know. Heading out again. Getting after it. That's right. We're gonna little, try uh, a little bit of a different game plan, right? We're gonna go up high, I think, today instead of kind of hanging around the bottom. Go up high and do some glass and see what we can see.
cool. Yeah, that's way cool. Some moose in the background there. Yeah. Getting out here, we're gonna walk a little bit. Do a little bit of a little spot in the stock as we walk. Try to find uh try to find Mr. Big. Straight to that you see that single bush in the middle? Yeah. Uh -huh. Somewhere right in there. Gotcha. Yeah. See anything other than those those mark? No, not yet. I mean we've got moose in every single direction which are fun to watch but just that pair of does right now are the only deer I've got my eyes on. It's one of those things where any any minute something can slip out. We didn't see anything as we were glassing. Losing light so we're gonna go back back to the house and uh, see if we can see anything on the way back in. Get another one in there. Knocked him down good. Well, he just got a buck down. 500 yards, dumped him in his tracks. It's a big three point front forks. G2s are huge. <sighs> right at last, you know, sunlight, we got the sunset going on back there. Awesome, awesome. How we do? You got oh, one? We got hey. one. Hey. Yeah, we got How one. Good. Is he a good one or what? Well, you remember the big one I was bragging about was last night? Him? He's done. Nice. Yeah. nice. Sweet, man. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good he's uh, just under 27 inches wide. Oh, nice. Big nice. three point. Good. Oh, that's great. Yeah, his G2s are like probably that tall. Oh, nice. Nice. Got to about 500 yards and I told Jim, I was like, dude, I'd be thrilled with that buck. Mm. He said, well, if you want him, so I, <laughs> so I let the air out of him, and we got up there, and he just kept growing on me. He's like, holy <laughs> crap, he's yeah. big! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's all fumbling with the memory card. His camera wasn't working. No, no. <laughs> we no. Uh, oh. oh my goodness! Yeah, I killed him there one day. Yeah, that's dad, great, bro. My dad almost. <laughs> Dude, the video he got is incredible too. Nice. Hey. Awesome. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Want to buy that from you for uh, twenty bucks, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> It may cost you more than that. I'll tell you why. Good. I went to video it, mm -hmm. and it said uh, internal storage full. Oh! And I thought, and I never put anything. Up. But last night, I took the card out oh. and played it on the TV. I didn't have an SD card in it. Oh, jam. But. Luckily, you have a pocket full of them. <laughs> oh, Jim, there you go. That's my I guy. <laughs> Stuff him in there. That's my guy. We'll go, uh, we'll go grab your buck. Yeah, my buck's still on the hill. Shot him pretty late. Got him uh, cleaned up, dressed out. It's been getting like 21 degrees at night, so no worries there. But yeah. he's still up on the hill, so we'll get him out when we got light. Covering mission in full effect. We got the workhorse, we got the crew. We're gonna be able to drive the side by side about 100 yards from him, so. We'll get down there and get him back up top and take some really good uh, daylight photos as well. This reminds me of skiing, the toboggan. The toboggan, except this is a little backwards. Gotta put his neck brace on. <laughs> I don't think we got one big enough. <laughs> what a stud. Yeah, he only has one nut. Maybe that's why he's only a three. For the afternoon and uh, I think we've reacquired Mark's buck over here in Boneyard and we're gonna see if we can get a shot on him.
He's up in the trees right now, so we can't, we don't have eyes. But we're hoping that he comes back out. <laughs> what if we walk past it, go up on that other finger, and shoot back? Should we go on the other hillside to the north? north? Yeah, just go up this ridge, I think. Another one in there. Underneath. Underneath him. Alrighty, boys. Tell me a little bit about last night. Last night. So we got on what we think now to be two different bucks. So we were uh, driving up the boneyard, looked off to the west, and I saw a decent buck just a split second of him. He got up out of the field and jumped in. We think he was bedded down. He jumped into the brush and uh, made his way up the hill. He was walking with three or four other does. So um, I was able to get fairly steady on him and started to get set up. He made his way up into a little clearing and started walking across the clearing, kind of following after those does. Just waiting for him to take a step, or I'm sorry, to stop walking and pause so I could take the shot. He never did stop. He just kept walking and chasing those does. So we came back downhill. Um, Jim and John were down at the bottom spot and they said that they saw what they thought was that same buck up on the hill just feeding. So we walked up uh, and basically made our way up to the ridge line, um, got eyes on this buck, had some, uh, had some difficulties figuring out what the range was. So um, Jaden was doing a great job, but that buck was right on the ridge line. So that, that laser from the range finder was skipping back and forth over the range, over the, the ridge line. So the first one called out was 460 and then there was a 350 or a 370 in there, just kind of bouncing back and forth. Either way, difficult to, uh, to figure out his range. So, I let one fly, um, easting, westing was, was dead on. It hit, must have been a, an inch or so low, just barely, barely missed, missed barely missed him. Um, he ran up maybe another 15 or 20 yards, stopped and paused and kind of looked back at us. Um, again, not a great shot, but I, I winged another one at him at another 400 yards or so and was another clean miss. So we pursued him for probably another half an hour, 45 minutes. He just stayed 400 to 450 yards ahead of us every single time we get to one ridge, ridge top. He was on the next ridge line over, still, still out, of, out of range a little bit for me. And, and as we were you know, huffing and puffing, couldn't get a good steady rest on him at four, 450. So we kept chasing him and uh, you know, lost him in, in the, after, you know, the, the evening, uh, twilight or whatever he was, he was getting out of there. So hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll see him or see one of his his buddies again today. Yeah, today's uh, this whole week, it's been a riot chasing these deer around. So today's the last day of the hunt. Mm -hmm. Got uh, high spirits and hopes that we're gonna get it done today. Yeah, absolutely. Mark's on him. He's ready to go. Buck's in a perfect spot. Perfect shot, Mark. Let's see what one it is. Bright red. And oxygenated. It's long, long. It's smelling. Holy cow, Where's yeah. Where's the last blood at? Uh, right, back the over there. The fence. There he is. There he is. 
All right. <laughs> nice. Piled up. And Great little buck, man. Not bad. Yeah. Beautiful buck. Great shot, dude. Man, he didn't freaking, he didn't bleed a ton for that lung shot. Look at that neck. Great shot, man. Oh, thank you. Nice shot, buddy. Thanks. Good times. We just uh, tagged out, got a nice four point buck. Tell me a little bit about uh, what happened this week, man. So we had a great week. <clears throat> Came up, saw a lot of deer, a lot of really good deer. Uh, passed on some really good bucks earlier on. Um, you know, thinking that we could, you know, the week was only going to get better, right? As, as things got on, the bucks got more ruddy and so on. But just had a great time. This is a gorgeous piece of property up here. Um, Jim and Linda were fantastic. What a phenomenal cook Linda is. We we ate like kings. Uh, had a really good time. Had some really good camaraderie up here. and Caught up on some movies that I should have watched a long time ago <laughs> during the middle of the day. and Took a couple good naps, but glassed a lot of beautiful country, a lot of beautiful bucks. Um, very feel very fortunate, very thankful for the opportunity to be up here. And, and uh, thanks for Hunts for the Brave putting stuff no on problem, like man. this, man. It's great. Appreciate, Appreciate you, it. your service and everything. <clears throat> so. If you know a veteran that uh, might benefit from what we got going on, get in touch with one of us and we'd gladly make it happen. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in and watching our Veterans Hunt. As always, we're going to be doing a giveaway. This week, we're going to be giving away a Cryptek Dalibor jacket. It's actually the jacket that I wore in this film, and I take it absolutely everywhere with me. I absolutely love my Dalibor jacket. So make sure that you like this video, comment, and subscribe, and you will be put in to win a Cryptek Dalibor jacket. Thanks for watching, and have a great night.